Well, the Illinois State House continues uh, in spring session, the third day this week that they're in session. Tons of stuff going on, and a lot of legislators laying out their various priorities. Of course, uh, I do this job here uh, on my own time, uh, broadcasting from home, but uh, my full time gig has me. Uh, with the center square at the Illinois State House, uh, tracking legislation and uh, following what uh, what's going on there. Uh, yesterday, uh, there were conversations about taxes. Uh, there were conversations about social media. Uh, the Manufacturers Association putting out their uh, priority lists. Also, uh, an interesting conversation from Black leaders about HIV and AIDS funding from the state. They say is not going to black-led organizations. Instead, it's going to more white-led organizations. Uh, plus, you've got a bill that's been filed by uh, State Representative Cam Buckner that's uh, uh, raising some eyebrows. Uh, it is Bishop on Air. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Uh, but let's talk about taxes. Uh, you had uh, a couple of different uh, measures that were floated yesterday, uh, including one from uh, Democrats who are looking to bring about a state child tax credit. And one measure already filed is from uh, Mike Simmons, a Democrat state senator who would give up to $700 in a tax credit for families with kids. Uh, but uh, another measure brought by several Democrats in the House and the Senate uh, would do something similar, but not as generous. Uh, here is uh, State Senator Omar Aquino uh, with the, uh, the Democrat caucus laying out some of their uh, priorities. And I'm also the father of two, of toddlers, of uh, twin toddlers, Omar uh, Sebastian and Isabel Sofia. <laughs> um, so I'm the purchaser of Pampers, of of, of clothing that, that, that doesn't grow with my children. It's not easy for families across this state these days. And that's why it's time for this state, our state, to make investments in our future. The child tax credit we are proposing this year would put money back into working class parents' pockets, directly in their pockets. Specifically, it would provide $300 for Illinois families who earn less than the median income. That might not sound like a lot, but it can make all the difference. That little extra change helps families stay afloat, provide a good education for their children, and reinvest that money right back into our local economies. The effect would be immense for families in my district and across our state. In terms of raw numbers, nearly half of the kids in Illinois, 1.4 million, let me repeat that, nearly half of all children in our state would benefit from this relief. Half, that's a great number. Every day I hear from constituents who support this effort and constituents who benefited from the federal child tax credit expansion. So uh, obviously the state house looking at that as a possibility, uh, but you have Republicans who offered up a measure at the Illinois state house that would ultimately bring about some property tax relief. And that property tax relief in a state like Illinois, you're looking at, uh, the state having some of the highest property taxes in the country. Uh, Illinois is regularly listed as having the highest property taxes of all states. But you had uh, state representatives, uh, Dan Ugasti and Tim Mozinga. Uh, they welcomed in uh, former state representative uh, Mark Batnick uh, to explain their proposal uh, to help lower property taxes by taking more state dollars and uh, putting those towards local pensions thereby local funds not necessarily having to pay higher pension costs, and that could help drop some of the property taxes. So those were some of the uh, the property tax proposals that were uh, offered up uh, at the Illinois State House. And that wasn't the only thing. You have uh, uh, other measures that were uh, brought forward. Uh, State Senator Sue Rezin, she had a news conference yesterday that laid out her Safe Screens Healthy Minds legislation. Uh, so I'm just going to read to some of this. Uh, that uh, ultimately would come about if Senate Bill 3334 uh, was ultimately uh, passed. And uh, that measure, uh, known as the Illinois Age Appropriate Design Code Act, it would, um, based off law that California passed, but with improvement, uh, Resin says, it would uh, require high default privacy settings at the point of design and clear language and tools to help children and their parents 
exercise of privacy rights and report concerns. Second uh, piece of legislation that she's looking for is Senate Bill 3355. It expands the Illinois Consumer Fraud and Deceptive Practices Act for social media. It would require all social media companies to have a free customer support service to address issues and complaints. Uh, you've got uh, uh, other uh, pieces of the Safe Screens Healthy Minds Initiative uh, that would require social media platforms to create an identification verification process in order to protect minors. And I think that this is where you could find some civil libertarians raising a red flag. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, Republican uh, presidential candidate um, Nikki Haley even said something similar to, you know, we need to have uh, you know identification for everybody on the Internet. Uh, so for this one piece of legislation that Sue Rezin is looking for, uh, again, it would uh, require social media platforms to create an identity verification process in order to protect minors. What that would look like, not sure. How a state like Illinois could enforce such a thing when the internet goes everywhere around the world? Well, you look at what happens over in the EU and they've got uh, some, some laws that they're trying to curb what some say is free speech. Well, uh, how is that gonna impact the rest of the, uh, the internet space? Uh, so how can a state like Illinois it really enforce such a thing or could they just do geofencing and then everybody in illinois is impacted by that uh by that particular bill while the rest of the country is not again uh some interesting questions there and as far as just the the technical specifications of pulling something off like that but then you get into the civil libertarian issues uh i mean listen even abraham lincoln wrote under a surname all right he would he would write some of the most uh, he would write some of the most uh, scathing criticisms of political leaders under a fake name. Now, old newspapers are not today's social media, but free speech is free speech. So I could see some people raising concerns about uh, Sue Rezin's measure there uh, that she floated at the Illinois State House. Uh, you have uh, uh, one piece of legislation also that's uh, raising some some eyebrows. There hasn't been a lot of talk about this, but it is a bill that uh, State Representative Cam Buckner filed, and uh, it would essentially ban single-family zoning. Let's read through the synopsis here. Uh, this measure, uh, House Bill 4795, uh, it would uh, create the Single Family Zoning Ban Act and defines zoning unit as a county, municipality, or township that's adopted zoning regulations and defines other terms. It provides that on and after June 1st, 2025, for a zoning unit with a population equal or greater than 100,000, but less than 500,000, and on Jan June 1st of 2026, for a zoning with population greater than 500,000, the zoning may not zone areas exclusively for single-family residential use. It requires middle housing to be allowed on property that's zoned residential. It requires adoption of zoning ordinances and zoning maps consistent with the act by June 1st, 2025 for zoning units with a population equal to 100,000, uh, less than 500,000, and then up to 500,000 more uh, the following year. So uh, you're, you're gonna limit single family zoning? Uh, an interesting proposal, I think you may hear even more about that in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, but that's been referred to the Rules Committee after being filed earlier this week. So an interesting uh, piece of legislation there. Uh, they do have some action they're gonna be doing today. You got the House and the Senate in the Illinois General Assembly. Uh, they're set to meet and then they go home for the week, but then they come back the following week and February 21st is when Governor J.B. Pritzker delivers his his state of the state and budget address where taxpayers are going to find out more about how the governor wants to spend their money. Uh, so that's your uh, state house preview and review here with Bishop on air. Greatly appreciate you guys being here each and every weekday morning. Uh, it is a, uh, a, a true uh, blessing to see so many people uh, tuning in each and every morning. So I thank you guys uh, and uh, be sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right. We'll be back at it tomorrow here with Bishop on air. Make it happen.